now that we have understood the process, the next thing that we need to understand are all the components of EIA. So when we talk about components of EIA, the screening that is being done, the scoping that is being done, it is being done on the basis of a set of parameters. And we saw a list of questionnaire that the European Union has on the basis of which they do all the research and they proceed after that. So when it comes to these components, you need to understand what are the components and how these things are being decided. So for example, if we talk about the air environment, so what is the meaning of air environment? We are going to look after various components with respect to air. For example, you can talk about the quality of ambient air. The quality of ambient air can be talked about. Then after that, the amount of emissions that will happen from the given project. Then the meteorological data, for example, something like wind speed comes into the picture here. Similarly, when it comes to the emission, there are two aspects even for the emission. What is the quality of emission that is happening and what is the impact of this emission that is happening here. So all these are the various components that needs to be looked after. Then similarly, if we talk about noise. So then again, there are two aspects that will come into the picture. First, what is the level of noise? What is the level of noise? And what are the strategies that can be taken up to reduce this noise? So these are the two components that come up when it comes to the noise. Then when we come to water, you can think of all these aspects. So what are we looking at? So even if I don't tell you what exactly are these components, you will still be able to guess it. For example, when we talk about air, there are two things. On one side, you would have the baseline conditions. If you remember, we talked about what is baseline condition. And secondly, what is the impact? So both the aspects have to be understood. So when we talk about air, first of all, we look into the pollution levels that already exist. We look into wind speed, humidity, etc. We look into what are the emissions that are happening from this project. What are the impacts that we would have from this project? So these are all the aspects that come into the picture. Similarly, when we talk about water, again, there are two aspects. One, the quality of water that exists in the nearby areas, quality in nearby areas. And secondly, you would have the impact of the project, right? Again, you have the impact of the project. Then after that, you have biological environment. So when it comes to biological environment, we would look into what? We would look into the flora and fauna. Similarly, what is the impact on the wildlife and what is the impact on the forest areas or the nearby areas which are forested? That again comes into the picture. And finally, we also need to look at the future. That is there a stress that will be caused due to this project because when it comes to wildlife, you have to understand that and we talked about this when you talk about the ecological structure and we, when we talked about biodiversity, that a long-term process exists. So if we talk about the changes that might happen to the environment or the ecosystem, it's not something that will happen overnight. We might have a long-term impact that would have some kind of negative issues with respect to these areas. So that future also needs to be evaluated. So when it comes to biological environment first, we have to understand what flora and fauna exists. We need to have a proper research on it. Secondly, what kind of impact these projects would have. And third, in future, what are we going to see? So these are the three components when it comes to biological environment. Similarly, when we talk about land environment, first would be the impact on soil and the land use pattern. And second, to look after if there are any historical monuments or buildings which are of utmost importance to us. So these are the two aspects that needs to be looked upon when it comes to the land environment. Then comes the socio-economic and health environment. So first of all, we'll have to see how would the communities which are living in these areas be affected. Secondly, is there a chance that these communities health-wise would be affected in a negative manner? What kind of diseases could happen because of the projects that are being taken up? Then after that, the cultural significance that if this is an area which has been very significant culturally, historically for India, then in that case, we need to look after that perspective also. So all these are various things that needs to be looked upon. And then what are the economic impact that this project would have? Are there any economic benefits? Are there any jobs being created? All these aspects come into the picture. And if at all you are rehabilitating people from here, what is the plan for rehabilitation? How are we going to compensate the people who are living in these areas? So this is the socio-economic and health environment that we are talking about. 
then comes risk assessment so when we talk about risk assessments we have to look into all the kinds of hazards so whether you talk about any natural hazard or you talk about any man made hazard all these components we will have to look upon we'll have to understand each and every aspect from this perspective for example let's say there are chances that there could be some seismic activities that might happen because of the project that has been taken up so are there chances of that we might not want to take a project that is being taken up in an area which is very fragile whether you talk about geologically from the point of view of earthquakes from the point of view of landslides etc then at the same time man made hazards the chances of fires happening the chances of chemical leak happening all these kind of things needs to be looked upon and then you have the environment management plan basically all the mitigation strategies all the mitigation strategies apart from that what long term plans do we have for for this region and then if there is any requirement of rehabilitation and settlement then that also must be looked upon so from the point of view of environment management plan these are the areas that has to be looked after so these are the components of eia just understand each and every part and then all the components with respect to each of these parts now there can be a direct question also that can be asked from this part for example let's say you have been asked what are the various components of eia how do you measure the components of air environment when any new project is starting so then you have to list out the various components very briefly explain them but the prime focus would be on air environment and all the things related to air environment for example you can list out air pollution you can list out air quality index you can list out the various factors with respect to wind speed with respect to temperature with respect to humidity so all these kind of things can come into the picture if at all such a question comes in the exam so this is about the components of eia now next we need to have a look at how exactly eia has developed in india if you look at just after the independence you will see that not much was happening with respect to environmental impact assessment there was no assessment as such that we were thinking of there were a lot of infrastructure projects being taken up a lot of developmental projects being taken up a lot of hydro power plants being set up all these were happening in the first 15 years of time and it is at this point of time that even our first prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru had gone on record that he knows that there are a lot of infrastructure projects and hydro power plants which are being built in india and he said that i hope that the environmental assessment is being done and we are considerate while doing these things so there was no rules as such but yes there was an understanding in the indian government also that these kind of things should be looked after and this is when we see that after approximately 30 years of independence for the first time there was something that was being done that the planning commission asked the department of science and technology to examine the river valley projects from an environmental angle and then after that and this kept on happening the government used to look after that there was no legislative support that was provided to it but after that you will see that in 1994 for the first time union ministry of environment and forest at that point of time it was environment and forest now it is environment forest and climate change so the union ministry of environment and forest promulgated an eia notification making environmental clearance mandatory for expansion or moderation of any activity for setting up new projects that had been listed in their schedule 1 of the notification so all the activities that were listed in schedule 1 for example mining activities at that point of time they had to undergo clearance before being taken up before being started so this was the first step towards building a mechanism for environmental impact assessment then after that we saw that there were many amendments that kept on happening and you will see that there have been more than i think 12 amendments that have happened until now then after that one major development was 2006 2006 there was major amendment that was done to environmental impact assessment rules and this was it was made mandatory for various projects such as mining thermal power plants river valley infrastructure and industries including very small electroplating or even foundry units to get environmental clearance and this is something which was a very significant change that everything was listed out that these are certain industries which have to undergo clearance before being taken up and that's why we say that 
in 2006 a big step was taken towards building a very robust environmental impact assessment rule then there were four stages that were listed out screening scoping public hearing and appraisal so basically these are the four steps that even today are being taken up but all the extra steps that we discussed these are the sub steps of all these aspects